Hey guys, this is Colin. This is Colin Talks Crypto. I'm just sitting up on my patio right now and I'm doing a very informal style um, podcast here. I'm just going to talk and I'm gonna let these thoughts free flow because I've just stumbled upon some information that I feel is very shocking to me. As you all know, I'm a very, very big proponent of EOS and I love it. And fast forward to the end of this video, I still do. However, I'm just going to get to the point here. I think that currently almost all, if not all, EOS dApps and smart contracts currently are mutable and centralized. I do not think that we are running decentralized smart contracts on EOS. I think that we have a decentralized blockchain, but I think that the smart contracts are centralized fully and mutable. And that's kind of blowing my mind here because this whole time I'm thinking, oh, everything's decentralized and you know, no single actor controls anything. I think that's completely false. And by the way, I just want to preface this whole podcast with, if I'm wrong, let me know. Please educate me because I'm learning just like you guys are. And you know, maybe I don't have the full picture here, but with the information I've got, I'm concerned and surprised that I hadn't seen this before. And so I'm going to back up. So how did this even come about? All right. Well, I made a YouTube video and uh, it's called Decentralizing EOS Smart Contracts. And the reason I made that video is because EOS New York had made a proposal. And in that proposal were two parts, part one and part two. And um, part two was a fund for creating and incentivizing production on EOS blockchain an opt-in approach. And part one is the thing that got my gears turning here. And part one is an opt-in way for dApp creators to give permission of their smart contract control over to block producers. Now, why would they do that? Well, the reason is because currently, if you have a dApp creator, the control of that dApp is by that one entity who created the dApp whether he has one key pair or he has a different owner key than a different active key, it could be the same dApp creator. We have no way of really knowing or proving. So for all intents and purposes, we should probably assume the worst case scenario, they have control of both keys. Whether it's a multi-sig account, doesn't really matter. They could be controlling all the multi-sig keys, right? So just because it looks better, doesn't mean it necessarily is more secure or more decentralized. Now, obviously, if they have multi keys, that's good in the fact that if they lose one key or they compromise one key, at least they've got other keys to back that up. So that's definitely a good thing. But as far as centralization and decentralization goes, I think it shows absolutely nothing whether they have one key, two keys or 15 keys on a smart contract, because who can prove who's holding those keys? And I think really the only way to do it is to have the block producers hold those keys. And that's exactly what part one of US New York's proposal says. Have the block producers optionally control the keys if you want to have an immutable contract. And that way you can guarantee it's not being controlled by one entity. The only other way that I'm aware of, and again, props to US New York for bringing this to my attention, to uh, make a smart contract immutable fully, this would be like the most finite way to do so would be to null the keys controlling that smart contract, completely nullify the keys. Therefore, you cannot edit it anymore. And then you would have the equivalent of a completely immutable decentralized smart contract that no one can modify, no one can alter, nothing can change about it. And that would be the equivalent level that Ethereum smart contracts are. Now, obviously, the whole basis, the whole premise of EOS is that we can edit bugs, handle bugs as they come up. As Dan said, when you code something, bugs are a part of the process. I mean, that's just going to happen. There is no programmer alive who has written a whole game or a whole huge program and not had a single bug. Bugs are a part of the process. And so EOS was designed extremely intelligently to allow DAP developers the ability to fix bugs on live code. And that was the exact problem that the Ethereum DAO ran into. It was immutable, you know, contract as code, couldn't be changed. And therefore, when there was an exploit in the code, that bug that allowed a quote unquote hacker, he wasn't even really a hacker. He was just someone who used the code as it was coded. 
and he withdrew 12 million Ethereum worth $150 million at the time. That was because the smart contract was working the way it was coded and it had a bug in it. So a feather in EOS's cap is that you can fix stuff like that. That is the entire point of having mutable smart contracts. What I don't think the community realizes at large is that every single smart contract right now on EOS is mutable because they're all able to change it. So whether it's one, two, or three people who have control of those keys, that's one, two, or three people who can modify that smart contract. And when it gets into the point of having funds on a smart contract, so if you have the make or die you know, tokens, stable coins, and you have user funds in the background, um, those tokens are at the whim of the dApp creator. So while the code in the smart contract shows what that contract's going to do, there's nothing stopping the smart contract developer from modifying the smart contract with his keys and redeploying it, and it has the different functionality than it had before. So I think this is really an important feature of why Ricardian contracts are so vital, because it gives you the English level equivalent of what the smart contract is supposed to do. Um, again, I'm just I'm concerned about the ability to, on the fly, modify a smart contract and take all the EOS in that smart contract, drop it on an exchange, find some decentralized exchange, for example, and convert those to Bitcoin, and boom, you're out of the system. And I don't know that block producers would have time to stop something like that. So. I feel like this is a problem that has not yet come to the community's attention because it has not yet been exploited. And it's like the DAO. When the DAO happened, it just blew up and went all over the news, right? I feel like we have the equivalent waiting to happen on EOS right now because by default, all smart contracts on EOS are mutable and modifiable. And I'm really not trying to be an alarmist here, but I am also really concerned when I come to the awareness that something like this could be just sitting there waiting to happen. So here's a hypothetical situation of how I could see it going really, really south. So we have a smart contract. It promises to be the next major stable token or the next major gambling dApp or whatever. And users put tons of funds into it, tons of EOS. It's viral, it's super popular, and it loads up with EOS. Let's say it has millions of EOS in it. And at some point, whether the dApp developer goes rogue, or whether he gets compromised, maybe he gets threatened, or maybe a hacker gets his uh, permissions, his, uh, his private key that controls that smart contract, whatever the circumstance is. If that happens, the smart contract can be altered and the funds can be deviated from their normal smart contract pattern. Maybe the funds were originally supposed to go to the gambling pot and then the winner gets the prize and that was a smart contract. Well, then it gets redeployed and there's a new functionality and there's a withdraw function and it goes to the hacker's account or the compromised guy's account or the threatened guy's account. And he takes all the EOS and runs with it after he modified the smart contract to make it do so because he's able to, because you can quote unquote, fix a bug on an EOS smart contract. Well, what if it's not a bug and what if it's just straight up theft? And I think that only when we see a large amount of EOS being stolen in such a manner, will this come to the attention of the community. And so really what I'm doing by saying all this is I want to bring this to attention now so that we can fix this now because I feel like we have a looming danger over our heads. We have the DAO 2.0 looming in the future with this ability to modify smart contracts and with the fact that every smart contract hasn't been nulled and it is under individual control or individual entity control. I really feel that the 15 out of 21 block producers should have control over the smart contracts. That's a much, much higher threshold and a much, much higher friction and a much broader trust level because 15 out of 21 is what makes the blockchain run in the first place. If you can't trust 15 out of 21, you can't trust EOS. I personally put a high value of faith in the token holders voting in those 21 block producers 
And sure, it may not be perfect. You may have some, a couple of cabals here, you know, a couple of groups there. But on the whole, the blockchain, I think, is very safe. It's very secure. And it's only going to get more so when we have things like the resource exchange, further incentivizing users to vote. And that's why it's so important that we have users incentivized to vote because the block producers are the lifeblood of the decentralization of the chain. And the only greater lifeblood is the token holders themselves, which direct their votes and say which 21 block producers are active at any given point in this liquid plutocracy that we have on EOS. It changes, it's liquid, it's every few minutes there can be a different 21 block producers because of the liquid nature of this, which is really, it's so revolutionary, so tremendous. So really, I just want to maintain this decentralization and make sure that the community is really clear on what we've got going here. We have a fully decentralized blockchain. In fact, I would argue more decentralized than Ethereum, more decentralized than Bitcoin, because on those chains, you need only three or four mining pools to go corrupt before you have someone being able to change something on the chain. And then you have to have all the mining hardware change its hash rate to some other pool if they can notice in time, right? The equivalent on EOS is we have voters who are those miners and they stake their tokens and vote, but it's not three or four pools that are mining blocks. It's 21 block producers that are making those blocks and you need 15 of them simultaneously to be compromised to be able to do that. And that's basically impossible when you have block producers located all over the globe in different geographic jurisdictions, political jurisdictions. They're not in the same place. It would be basically impossible to compromise 15 out of 21. That is why EOS is a more secure and more decentralized blockchain than Ethereum or Bitcoin. And that's the best way I can describe that. So I hope that also paints the picture of why I am not a fear monger and I am not an EOS hater when I bring this to the attention. I really want to make this known so that if there's a problem, and again, correct me if I got this wrong, then we can fix it because I want EOS to be the best. I get kind of excited when I talk about EOS, but I'm very passionate about this subject. Now, with all this being said, do I feel that this is spelling the doomsday for EOS? No, I absolutely do not. As we've covered, and as I covered in my video, EOS has a higher level of programmability when it comes to smart contracts. Yes, perhaps by default, they are mutable and centralized, and that's what I'm bringing to attention. But it doesn't mean that they can't be immutable and fully decentralized, for example, by nulling the keys on that smart contract or what I think is a good middle ground, giving access of that smart contract to the block producers so that if a DAO level debacle occurs, block producers can fix it and the whole chain doesn't have to be forked. I think that's the level of control that we need to see. And I would really actually like to see that as a default. Now it's a little tricky because when you're programming a new DAP, of course you're gonna have bugs and you can sit there and make it on the jungle net all day long on the test net until you're absolutely 100% positive, I don't know if you can ever be 100% positive, 99.9% .9 positive that your smart contract is infallible. And at that point, you could then deploy it on the mainnet and do it in a completely immutable fashion. But I don't know that that's realistic. You know, that's what Ethereum developers had to do. They had to test, 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 finally deploy, and then pray to God that they never had a single bug ever crop up forevermore on their smart contract. And I don't think that's a very intelligent approach. So I'm looking at the situation going, what's an optimal approach? And I think that the best approach is twofold. I think that someone or someones need to create a tool, a simple website, whereby you can plug in any smart contract name, the account name, and it gives you a green light or a red light. Green light means it's totally immutable, it cannot be changed, the keys have been nulled, or uh, maybe a yellow light, the keys have been given to block producers, only block producers can change it. I would feel very safe about that. Or a red light, meaning the keys have not been nulled, control has not been given to block producers, the entity that made that smart contract remains in full control of it with however many keys they've got securing it and regardless of what their permission structure is. Because again, we don't know who has those keys anyways. So you can say a 15 out of 16 multisig looks pretty good, but what if 15 out of 16 of those keys are all in the same guy's control? 
So I think we need to have a tool. A block producer needs to make this tool. Someone from the community needs to make this tool where we have a website. You plug in the smart contract name, it gives you a green, yellow, or red light. And that tells you whether it's safe, it's pretty safe, or it's not safe at all. And I wouldn't put any significant amount of funds into any smart contract that came up with a red light on that test. So we need to make it really easy. And I think that needs to be integrated into every wallet and every interface that goes along with smart contracts that needs to be prominently displayed at the top right to the side of the account's name with the smart contract indicating whether it's safe pretty safe or not safe at all whether it's mutable or immutable because as users of a blockchain we really need to know that before we start putting our funds in i hate to see a hundred thousand eos in a smart contract that's completely subject to the changes and whims of the dap developer and again not to assume malintent on the behalf of any dap developer in fact i would be willing to go so far as to say that 99 percent of dap developers are good intentioned and would never do anything to compromise their users funds but that's not the point because this is the blockchain. If we wanted a centralized solution where we wanted to have trust, we wouldn't use a blockchain. I'd go to the bank. <laughs> I'd go somewhere else. I'd use a website. I'd use Amazon, AWS. I'd use some centralized entity. That is the entire purpose the blockchain was created. The entire purpose that we're using a blockchain in the first place is to have the security and the transparency and the immutability that a blockchain brings. But I do think that most people, the vast majority, 99%, are good intentioned people. But it only takes that 1%. It takes that 1%, that one developer who has this vision to go rogue down the road and make uh, the DAO 2.0 entice a million EOS onto his platform and then exit scam everybody by modifying the smart contract, taking the funds and converting them on a decentralized exchange. And all it would take would be that red light bulb on the blockchain explorers and the wallets and the scatter and all that and the tool I talked about where you plug in that smart contract name and it shows the red light bulb and that would immediately alert people and make it very prominent. Very similar in the way that actually Scatter improved something where there was a Telos scam and people were getting their EOS scammed because they thought they were claiming Telos when there was not really a claim procedure, but they didn't know that. And what they were doing was giving permission through Scatter, even though the user did it, they were giving permission and actually update auth changing their private keys. And then lo and behold, their entire accounts were swept away under their feet because they thought they were claiming some tokens, but actually they were having their authorizations changed and their private keys changed. And um, they got scammed in this way. And then Scatter did the right thing and made it very publicly understandable that that's a very dangerous action. And so now Scatter gives you a major pop-up warning and doesn't just let you easily update auth and change your keys. And they're doing that to help the user. And that's all I'm talking about here is making something that's very helpful for the user to understand what they're getting themselves into. Because I guarantee you right now, you ask any user about their dApp that they're putting their funds into and they go, oh yeah, I'm using a decentralized app. It's a dApp. You know what? I'd go so far as to say right now that every application on EOS right now is not a dApp. It's an app. There is no decentralized part of this app because of the key factor, because there's one entity controlling it. It's crazy, I know. I sound like I'm a fear-mongering FUD spreader, but I don't think that right now we have dApps on EOS. We have apps on EOS. And what I'm talking about is making tools so that we can determine whether we're using a dApp or we're using just an app that is centralized in control or decentralized in control. And I think that's super, super key. So the first part of it is making the tools and making that green, red, and yellow, whatever the indicator is that makes it very clear that you know that your smart contract you're interacting with is safe or not, and that your funds are safe or not. And then we can go from there. And because new DAP developers need to be able to fix bugs in code, that's understood. You can't expect them to just deploy an immutable contract perfect from the start. So I'm not even suggesting that. What I am suggesting is that DAPs go through probably like a two level process where first they come out, maybe they're public, they allow users to deposit funds, but they don't have that stamp of approval. They have that red icon, you know, it's not immutable or it's not fully decentralized. 
um, that notification. And then when they feel like they've got all the bugs ironed out, they go into phase two mode and they lock that smart contract by either nulling the keys that control it or giving off control to the 15 of 21 block producers. And at that point, they then get the green light. They say, hey, we are fully decentralized. Our DAP is a DAP. It's no longer an app. Please use our platform. You can trust it. You can put 100 million EOS into it and no one's gonna ever do anything with it because no one can. And uh, that's what I'd like to see. So let me know what you think, guys. I hope that this got my point across. I know it's super long-winded. I want to engage in discussion about this. I want this to cultivate ideas and I want to come to a solution. I think that US New York's proposal is not just important, I think it's a must. I think that we have to have a solution like this where dApps have the ability to choose their level of decentralization for the control of the keys of their accounts. So thank you very much for listening. Let me know your thoughts and have a great day.